。好，那我们下一场演讲即将开始哈，那我先把那个麦克风交给我们的 Chaos。Chaos。Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to today's session. I'm going to take a deep dive with you to the constant dynamic and involved dynamic, and also a, in, an instruction called INDI, which is involved dynamic, dynamic shorts. And before we really take a deep dive into today's session, I'm going to self-introduction a bit. So currently, I am a V Programming Languages Organization member, and I'm also volunteer from Taiwan Calling User Group. Also, in the following semester and year, I will be Fengjia University's GDSC lead. And currently, my expertises are JVM bytecode and compiler. And in today's session, I would like to sh take a qu quick mark on today's sessions, which are, which will include dynamically computed constant, and I will show how lambda and string concatenation works. Also, you will discover some interesting point about dynamic programming in JVM. So let's get started. In two. Today, we are going to introduce constant dynamic and involved dynamic first. These are two different constants that exist in Java class file, and they are different because they have different uses for validation on runtime. So first, constant dynamic. It is used to represent dynamically computed constant, which is some like integer or float or string. String is also a constant that can be represented in JVM bytecode. And it is initialized through LDC instruction. And later, constant invoke dynamic. It is used to represent dynamically computed code site. And it is initialized through dy invoke dynamic, which is in short, in the, I will use in the, in the later session. And it is an instruction, yes. So, you already know that there is two constant, right? Their bootstrapping process are similar, so I'm going to cover them here. So, Indy and LDC will invoke on two constant, corresponding constant, which are involved dynamic and Indy. And after they are bootstrapped, they will go to call side invocation. This seems a, lit a little bit abstract here but we will cover it in the next code. So here's a procedure code about how to dynamically invoke plus on your runtime. So you, as you can see, there are three constant, and the first two are integer, which are one and two. And the third is the invoke dynamic, which is a reference to a bootstrap method and the method descriptor about the code site. And following, you can see three methods, which are plus and main and bootstrap. Plus is a very simple function that works as a additional operation. And main is our entry point of our program. And bootstrap, I will cover it later. So as you can see, this program seems a bit too complex to do a plus, but it is necessary because if you want to have some dynamically computed constant, this is a very best way to represent how you work with it. So let's take a look here. Once we run this program, you will first get into main method. And this main method is supposed to print out the addition output, which is A and B, or one or two. Its addition must be free, right? And as I mentioned earlier, you need to bootstrap it first. So how to bootstrap it? Well, you have to link a bootstrap method for the involved dynamic, and you will see addition bootstrap is our bootstrap method. And bootstrap method always comes with a method handles lookup string with a name or and a method type type. It is three necessary parameters for bootstrapping. And let's get into our code, right? And in our code, you can see we are going to link our bootstrap method 
to uh, cosine, which are which is the plus method, and so we are going to find a static method in current class, which is name plus, and in the first parameter of method type, it is an integer. In this case, it should returns a integer value, and in the following parameters, it represents how this method takes parameter, which in this case it should take two integers to be invoked with. And last, we are going to wrap it in a constant cosine, which indicates that in the later runtime, we are not able to mutate this method handle anyhow. And we are going to see this bootstrap method is done, and you can use this cosine anywhere else to use with invoke dynamic constant. And later, you will invoke this with indi instruction. And indi instruction will invoke the parameters with the cosine we created. And you should see this. That will return free, which is the correct answer of this program. And as you can see, if we want to use this certain feature, you have to make any bootstrap methods at every invocation, right? It seems a little bit redundant. So internally, JDK has some usage about Indy, and thus they introduces some several factory classes like lambda meta factory and string concat factory, which we'll cover in the later sections. And to make this a little bit less abstract, we are going to introduce some real world use case about this certain feature. So use case one, lambda. You already know lambda, how it works, right? So I'm going to just take a quick review with you. So this is a very small function that will print out hello world. And we, don't, we didn't invoke any way, so you shouldn't see any hello world, but it is a very simple demonstration to how to create a lambda function. And why Java uses invoke dynamic here? To avoid hidden desegregation process, in other words, to let Bootstrap method takes, the, takes care of the code generation or translation strategy for future compatibility. As you can see, this, word, uh, this sentence means that it will let compiler to decide how to implement it, not to use current implementation anyway. So this means you should let compiler to generate a runtime code for this lambda instead of in this Example, you just disaggregate it into a nominalist class in initialization. Yes, so the whole idea of lambda using Indy here is just to use future compatibility or translation strategy. So you don't have to deal with some backward compatibility anyway. It already happens before lambda introduces and JV are always want to escape from this. So this is a good example how they escape from this issue. And later, use case two, string concatenation. This is a very simple program that prints out the first argument. And as you can see, if you use other program to demonstrate a string concatenation, you will use a string builder that will allocate some necessary bytes if your string is larger than the bytes, the byte array. And after you append the strings, you can just use Java string builders to string method to build your string to string type. And later, this is, you have to notice that this section of code is a synthetic code. It is transfer, transformed from JVM compiler. And the last statement is our actual code. But JVM, uh, Java compiler just moves your string concatenation before the print, print line method. And you, after a certain JEP 
280 that calls indivised string concatenation. This is a procedural code of how to concatenate a string with a string type, or you can just use other object type anyway. And you, as you can see, it's quite complex, and I'm not going to explain how because it is it will take a lot a little bit much time to explain. It. But you can see, it just use a uh, involved dynamic with taking a string template that is with arcs and a Unicode Unicode character, and th and then they invoked with a object error error array. So then you will get your string concatenation works. So why they want to migrate from string builder to indie? The document says, efficiently concatenate a known numbers of arguments of known types. This is important because string concatenate has a very big flow in string builder. If we don't know, the capacity we have to increase is cap capacity in a very uh, in a fixed number. So if you have 15 characters already present in this byte array, then if you want to append two characters, you always have to append a, uh, allocate another 16 bytes after the byte array. So this will be a very big performance overhead. So to overcome this, they introduce this uh, indie usage here to just let compiler to know if this is possible to avoid within their string concat factory. And the, for the first, uh, for the second reason here is also for the translation strategy or even important concatenation strategy. Concatenation strategy is used to determine how this concatenation will work in the future works. And translation strategy, as I mentioned earlier in the Lambda section, is meant to let compiler to generate runtime code for it so you don't have to deal with backward compatibility anyway. And after we introduce these two real world usage in original Java standard library, I would like to share with some another company's real world usage like engines like JRuby or uh, Nashorn. The first one is a uh, Ruby runtime implemented in Java. And the second one is a uh, JavaScript engine implemented in JVM, right? And also JVM programming languages are also benefited from this feature, which is involved dynamic, such as Java, as we mentioned earlier in the uh, string concatenation and Lambda and Kotlin, Scala, Clojure, and Groovy. These are all benefit from this very impacted use uh, in the feature. And you may notice that Groovy has a crown right beside it. So I'm going to explain why he has a crown. Beyond this, Indy is meant to make dynamic programming languages possible on JVM. You can see it at JSR 292. Its original idea is to make dynamic programming language makes hap, uh, possible on the JVM. So it is not, not meant to make translation strategy at first, but it is meant to introduce the possibility of dynamic programming languages in JVM. But so, you can see Groovy is a dynamic programming language that implemented on JVM. So this makes him the biggest winner of this feature. And you might ask how to use this feature because you see the ultimate potential beyond this feature, right? But sadly, in sh long story short, you cannot use it anyway because why? Because this is kind of far from any other programming languages ideology. Their ideology is makes static type programming on JVM. But this feature is too powerful and uncertain because the type validation is 
is validated on runtime, so compiler wouldn't know, and this will cause some very big flaws in your program, like MPE does. So this is currently prevent from you directly from your programming language syntax. But if you really want to use it, you can use a certain collections of bytecode manipul manipulation factory uh, libraries to use it anyway. You can use ASM or ByteBody to generate ND from your class file or just generate it from nothing. It is quite a huge job to generate ND in example. But if you really master this feature, you can use it on any scenario and you will eventually become a very weird guy because this is not a very good idea to use it anyway. But it is a huge impact in JVM, right? So I'm going to wrap up here. The essential idea of Indy, as we mentioned in the first section of our session, it is meant for its translation strategy for future compatibility. So you don't have to decide your implementation in current status of work. You don't have to be limited from your compi compiler's implementation right now. But you can let compiler to decide what to generate and what to run in the later versions of JVM. And the, um, in the later section of our session, we introduce a very important idea about Indy, which is makes dynamic programming languages hap happens possibly on JVM. And Groovy is a good example. And if you already write some Java repository uh, projects, you can see how is a uh, dynamic programming in Gradle's setting file, right? And this is today's my session, and I'm going to wrap up here for some Q and A's. If you have any questions about this feature, because the time is quite run off. Okay, so I'm going to let anyone if you have any questions about ND and this feature. Uh, I have already used some Invo Dynamic in my implementation of my own programming languages, and it is called Yako. You can see the project in my GitHub link if you want to. And yes, I just followed Java's way to concatenate the strings because it already has a, have an implementation. How? Why not just use it? But Yes, this feature is hard to control because if you didn't design it well, you might lead to some very weird bugs. Like if you're, if you have to bootstrap it, right? It also means you have to catch in some classes that you are involved with. To make dynamic programming possible on JVN, you have to remember that your types are your final defense. Otherwise, it may lead to some weird bug that co can cause some undefined behavior. Even if not, it, it is not an undefined behavior, but it might cause some weirdness to your program. So you have to double check if you are using it. Anyone has a question to ask? No? Okay, so I think today's session is going to wrap up here. So thanks for everyone's listening. I'm I'm Kyle Ling. I'm thanks for your today's part participation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's take a rest. And if you have any question, welcome to come here. And the next session will be twelve fifty. So we have fifty minutes break.
Thank you.